Okay, YouTubers, this is Joe from Italian TV. Another quick game of Interplanetary I Spy with a bit of uh, tech going on here. We've got the new Mars 2020 rover uh, schematic and kind of 3D illustration here. Uh, links will be below for all this stuff. Um, I've got the instrument page up here with all the different instruments. It's actually very, very similar to the Curiosity rover, but it has a few modifications. Um, it's got a similar sort of uh, mass cam, and it's got different sensors, and uh, it, it's basically the same, but it will have one or two extra experiments on board. I'm not going to read through all this now, because you can do that by following the links below in the description, okay? Um, but it, it's very, very similar to the Curiosity rover, and slightly worryingly, as you will see from this picture, it has rather flimsy looking wheels like the Curiosity does. Very similar setup, this kind of like um, lightweight sort of um, design. I mean I'm sure they're pretty strong because they have these these metal bars inside, these spokes and stuff, uh, which will keep it keep the integrity of the wheel pretty well. But the problem is, as we've seen with the Curiosity, and as I will show you in a minute, uh, the wheels on that are not doing particularly well. Um, but I just thought this was a great picture. Uh, you can download this from from the links below in the description. Um, it comes in a, in a large JPEG or a, a really quite large TIFF Im uh, image as well, uh, which may be a bit large, but the, actually the JPEG's pretty good, and there's some good detail in here, some great stuff to look at. I mean, there's some real good detail here. Uh, this is awesome. Um, and it shows a sort of transparency, so you can see the workings inside. There's the sort of mass cam here, Ken cam sort of thing there that, that would shoot the laser out. Uh, but it, it does have some design differences. But one thing that really does concern me are the wheels. Now, if I show you what I mean, a lot of you would have seen pictures of the, of the uh, Curiosity wheels and how badly damaged they are. And I would have thought that they would have designed the wheels differently on this thing, even though the Curiosity's been very successful um, much like the Opportunity Rover, um, it's not been there as long and it's showing an awful lot more damage than the Opportunity uh, does, even though it's only been up there in about four years now. Whereas the Opportunity's been up there a lot longer, three times that long. Okay, so let me show you um, what I've got up here. I've got the catalogue page here. Uh, this is where you can download the different images from and that gives you a sort of rundown on, on what the uh, rover is going to be doing and, and uh, how it's being designed and stuff like that. Now, this may not actually be the finalised design of the, uh, the 2020 rover. Uh, there may be some modifications made to this, uh, which I, I really hope they do, because when you look at um, this, for instance, this is the Curiosity, this is a close-up taken, I think, probably, I think it's probably taken with the arm cam, uh, kind of looking underneath the right side of the rover and look at the damage we have here. Really bad wheel damage. Uh, and to all intents and purposes um, that may, way, may well be normal rock damage where it's driven over stuff. There are some quite sharp rocks and, and stuff like that on the surface. But I actually think this is a, it, it looks to me like it's kind of driven over a landmine or, or some kind of small explosive device. I mean, that's just speculation, of course, but there is a lot of damage to this wheel. And uh, it did kind of appear almost in the matter of a few days, and uh, it really makes you wonder what the rover has been up to. Um, but yeah, as you can see, these holes, these large holes have been punched right through this structure of the wheel here. And uh, that's very worrying. Of course, it has six wheels, so I mean, if this wheel failed completely, it could still run. Um, that would not be the end of the rover, but it would cause difficulties uh, and probably put it a bit off balance, um, put a bit of a strain on the motor. Um, but there we go. I mean, that's my opinion. I really do think these would, the wheel design of this particular rover, if they're going to use that again, it could be a real problem. And uh, let's have another look at that as well. I mean, it's not exactly the same, but they are the same sort of lightweight sort of uh, setup here. Um, and I think that's a problem. I mean, I really don't think that's good enough. I know the gravity on Mars is, is about just over a third less, a third of Earth's. 
Uh, but the, the rover is very heavy. I mean, um, it's over a ton. Uh, so it, it's still going to put a lot of stress on these on these parts of the rover. So there was that. So you can download that from the link below, and you can see the the uh, the more detailed schematics and, and um, instruments here. And and the question is, of course, whether it will carry on. Uh, the, the work that they've done with the Curiosity and the Opportunity and the Spirit Rover and will we still carry on getting the images and will we still find things like this the Giant Sphinx uh, which I published uh, a, a few months ago now this is actually part two, this shows multiple now a lot of you may have seen this but a lot of you may not have done this was published a while ago so some of you may have missed this I'm just going to play it through a little bit now this was taken using the mask cam on the Curiosity uh, now this is a, over a kilometre away, so this is a long way off, which is why it looks blurry and why it looks a bit f um, foggy and, and everything else. Also the images have been degraded uh, quite considerably, but um, you can get around that by enhancing the images slightly. Um, but they're always going to look a bit foggy, uh, unless you get the, the full resolution TIFF images, which they don't release very often. But there we go, there's a sphinx, a giant sphinx. This is over 100 foot long, possibly 200. I think it's probably about 150 or 120. Um, it's quite a long way off and it still looks pretty big. That was one of my favourites uh, from this year. In fact, I, I've struggled to find anything as, as interesting as this in the Curiosity images recently. And I may never find anything quite as interesting as this. But there was this, I didn't find this uh, skull here. This was found by Eric Hollingridge. Um, I think early this year uh, when was this published uh, it may have been last year actually no it's November 2015 this is an awesome fight now this is a close up object on the ground and it looks to be a humanoid skull I'm going to let that play through a little bit you can see the enhancements coming up one of the best finds ever on Mars I, I think um, which is why I, I decided to publish it and I, I, there's full credit to Eric Collingridge in the description with links to his channel and, and stuff like that. Um, but this goes to show how badly they do degrade the images, and this is raw. And you can see uh, how poor and foggy and, and uh, mucked up this image is. So the only thing you can do, really, is to add, is to colour correct it first and then add some contrast, like I've done here. And you can start to see some of the detail. And then you've really got to push the brightness and contrast and try and restore the image back to something like it would have been before it was downgraded by NASA. So that was an interesting one, one of my favourite finds. Uh, fair shout to Eric on that one. And there was this one, I'm not going to show you all my stuff here, I'm just going to sh show you a very short selection. This is one of my favourite finds, this is from uh, a, a long shot. Now this is probably at about two kilometres away from the rover, but this is very large. This is also probably over 100 foot long, I couldn't tell you exactly. This is a what looks to me like a wrecked boat. Now this is a raw clip from the Gigapan, um, so it's bluer than you would normally expect, because so it's, it's already been colour corrected, but there's, there's no extra contrast added to that, that's just been colour corrected. And you can see this long structure here, that looks like a front of a boat here with a cabin that's been kind of crushed or ripped apart in a cataclysm like there was on Mars, or a war, or an explosion, whatever it was. There's lots of interesting structures here, but even though it's quite a long way off, um, it's quite large, so you can still see some detail. I'm going to let that play through a little bit. So this one is taken from a good one or two, or even three kilometres back. Uh, but the rover has zoomed in with the mask cam, and there's the enhancement. There we go. What I've done here is highlight the... Uh, the bright parts and darken the dark bits just to make it stand out so you can you can all see that on your mobile phones and various devices so that to me looks like an intelligent structure you can see parts of the cabin here or, or what looks like kind of some kind of cabin or I mean this may not be a boat at all it could be something else but that's how I interpreted it because that's what it looked like <laughs> that's all you can do with these images so there we go there was that and uh, there I mean the question is whether in the 2020 mission, will NASA finally come clean? Motorbike just went past there, sorry about that. Will NASA finally come clean? 
in 2020 and admit to things like this on Mars, the giant sphinx, or the Martian skull here. I've called this um, Homo Aeolis. Uh, get your teeth in. Homo Aeolis, which is named after Aeolis Mons, which is Mount Sharp, which is about a, a, a kilometre away from this object behind it, or two. So there we have it. I mean, will they ever admit these kind of structures? Um, they've only just admitted water on Mars, so I doubt it. So there we go. Links will be below in the description, guys. Um, also, um, whilst I'm at it, I thought I'd do a quick plug for my, I should say, our new website. This is anomalyhunters.tv. Uh, this is one I've just built, it's not quite finished yet, um, a, a new website. This is a hub for all the uh, UFA members, or, or at least the ones who have video content. And uh, you can link to all their Facebook pages and groups from this page. Uh, it will take you to their, uh, their websites. Uh, let's have a look at this one, of course. Let's go to that one. Let's, let's buy. Um, you've got you've got links to everything here. It links to uh, the, um, YouTube channels, Facebook groups, and websites. So, and it doesn't want to seem to want to link to it for now. I think my graphics card is struggling a bit. There we go. So yes, you have YouTube links, Facebook links, and website links at the top of the page, and you have videos and stuff to look at here, which will also link you to YouTube. So check this out. This is a brand new site. Hopefully. Um, I will be adding a few more people to this soon as well. So this will be extended somewhat, uh, this site here. I've got some of my videos at the bottom. There's a lot of my stuff on here at the moment, but I hope to replace a lot of that with other people's as we go along. Um, but this is primarily for, for TV companies and radio companies to actually get hold of us and contact us to, for doing stuff like Ancient Aliens like I've done or work like... Uh, Will's done with, with uh, Richard Hoagland and stuff like that. Also, Chris has done some stuff with uh, Russian TV. Uh, Thomas at, at Mars Moon Space has done lots of interviews, even with astronauts and quite famous people, and film directors, that kind of thing. So it's, there's quite an in-depth and wide range of stuff going on with our UFAR group now. And check this new site out. Thanks for watching, everybody. I will be doing a proper trailer for this site soon. Um, Thanks for watching everybody, I'll see you soon.